I've seen Diddy have to hire extra security, almost the military, to stop people from wanting to scale the wall to get in his house because on the other side of that wall is Beyonce, Jay-Z, and every big star you want to- Jason Lee is shaking up Hollywood and the hip-hop world with his latest revelations. He's recently hinted at alleged marital troubles among top stars and is calling out Jay-Z to come forward about a lawsuit involving Diddy. Known for his bold statements, Jason claims to have inside information from reliable sources within Diddy's inner circle. His most shocking allegation? That Diddy is attempting to deflect blame onto his own sons to cover up his own hidden misdeeds. The entertainment world is buzzing as fans and insiders wonder just how deep these accusations go. A man that's wondering why Fonsworth Bentley, you know, why he has not came out and defended Diddy. You know, they was real cool at one point, you know, so. Well, I was there when Fonsworth Bentley got his actual name. How they came up with the name and everything. We were sitting in front of the uh, apartment building on 74th and Park Avenue. It was me, him, Tony DeNaro. Puff was upstairs. They was trying to figure out. He had became Puff, one of Puff personal assistants. You understand? To make sure all sh Puff sh is there when we get ready to go. Everything was supposed to be in order. That was Farnsworth Bentley job. When Puff has to go to restaurants or place like that, you know, uh, he made sure everything was straight with that you know what i'm saying and he had another assistant too uh but Farnsworth bentley was his personal assistant put out his clothes told him what he should wear all that like a stylist and personal assistant all together you know so we was in front of the house and um this dude tony De Niro, he played guitar in that uh bad boy for life the black dude, not the white guy. The black dude who played the guitar, that's Tony De Niro. I think he might be from California or something. So Tony De Niro was like, yo, we got to think of a name for you, man. And if you're going to be his personal assistant and uh, slash butler slash umbrella carrier, whatever you going to do, you understand? We got to think of a name for you. We, we're going to try to make you like Bentley or either uh, uh, Fonsworth or either Bent. You got to be, you know, you got to have that kind of persona. You got to dress all the time, be neat and the whole nine yards. And then the dude, Derek, was playing with him like, yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I know how to do that. I could be over the top. You know, he was acting like that. You know what I'm saying? I could be over the top. So he was saying that. And uh, the dude, Tony De Niro, said, we got to figure out a name for you, man. It's got to be on the level of, you know, those characters. He said, you got you to be like Fonsworth. Jason is making headlines with claims that Diddy is not only trying to scapegoat his own children, but is allegedly involved in serious and questionable activities. These revelations have sent shockwaves through the industry, leaving fans and insiders alike questioning the full extent of Diddy's actions. As the story unfolds, the public is left wondering just how deep this scandal might go and what it means for those within Diddy's circle. He said, Fuck it, we're just gonna call you Fonsworth Bentley. And he said, I like it. And they start calling him that. His name Fonsworth Bentley. And I said, these motherfuckers corny. <laughs> like I was. I was like, yo, believe this. But he was always right there, but not like at nighttime when we was at doing things, he was he wasn't he wasn't around, bro. He was only there when the cameras was there and shit like that. You know, I don't know, you know, I don't know how much he was he could do. I don't I don't know if he would say anything, because he probably signed the ND a non-disclosure and he don't want to say anything against Puff anyway because Puff got shit on him and I ain't talk about no sexual shit you, uh, none of that shit the nigga was stealing bro <laughs> yo bro the nigga's a yo he got he, <laughs> I don't want to put that on sticky fingers that nigga 
That nigga right there, bro. Don't lay nothing down around him. You hear me? Don't lay nothing down around dude right there. Dog, Jennifer Lopez had these boots. They cost $5,000. I'm like, what kind of fucking boots cost $5,000? Now, you got to realize this is like in 2000, early 2000s. These boots cost $5,000. And because she was going to be out of, out of the country or something like that, she didn't have them come to her house down in the village because she would have never got it because they'd be stealing her stuff down there at her apartment. So she had them come to Puff House. She wanted these boots so bad. She was mad. We, you know, they was, they looked through everything trying to find Jennifer boots because Puff had like a, you know, Puff, People used to just give him shit and send him shit from everywhere. So he had this room, this mail room in his house with numbers just that he never even opened. But I don't know how far where Bentley found that shit. But we went over there to his house and we found a lot of Jennifer shit and everybody else's shit that belonged to Puff. I guess, I guess Puff had too much stuff in the room and he was just keeping them for it. And you seen this with your own eyes? That's crazy, man. My own eyes, bro. We went to his apartment. He don't even seem like that type of dude, yo, but damn. Security. Security also we went over there, man. They had to do shit, bro. And that's why Puff had stopped messing with him. And then he goes to get a show. Puff ain't say nothing. He went and got a show of how to be a teaching thug how to be the gentleman. I hope the first thing he talked to him was it don't steal. <laughs> Jason's penchant for stirring controversy is well known, having previously grabbed attention by openly criticizing Jay-Z's alleged criminal connections and even threatening to expose incriminating information. His willingness to use blackmail as a tool to manipulate high-profile figures highlights just how far he's prepared to go to pursue his goals. This bold approach has not only kept him in the spotlight, but also made powerful figures wary of what he might reveal next. I know about the history between Mace and Diddy. Let the people know how Diddy did him dirty, if you don't mind. From what I know, I think that um, Diddy wasn't teaching Mace the business. You understand? He was using Mace as other artists to write rhymes on other people, write songs, on other people albums on his album uh and taking their talents and still in their publishing on different albums and different records prime example mace wrote that bad boy joint i ain't even see him at the premiere because i believe diddy owned most of the publishing on that which ended up being a big record that for went over to movies. I think Mace was upset the fact that he learned that when he learned the business, he saw how Diddy had robbed him. He had took the glory for the albums, the music, and all the records that he had did. And he, he got pennies for it. You understand? Eight thousand here, ten thousand there. You understand when they when the, the, the record go platinum, <laughs> uh, Diddy's getting two, three hundred thousand, and only gave him pennies for writing a song, getting points on publishing that he didn't even deserve. So Mace learning the business and knowing the business, it led him to be upset. Diddy was teaching him wrong. Like, Diddy was teaching him not to even speak to people, brother. You understand what I'm saying? Nace used to come up in there. Yo, what's up? How you doing? He had that Harlem smile. You know what I mean? What I mean? Like, he, he happy. He shining. Because, you know, he had a lot of Jews that the other artists didn't have. He used to come up in the studios. He used to come places fly. Diddy tell him. Yo, you ain't gonna never be famous because you always speaking to people. Let them speak to you. I seen Mace stop 
speaking to people. When I told him, man, don't listen to that nigga with that old dumb shit. Be you. But he found out. Rumors about Jay-Z and Beyonce's marriage have circulated for years, with whispers of infidelity and complex business ties adding fuel to the speculation. Jason now claims that Beyonce may be attempting to distance herself from Jay-Z, reportedly due to his alleged connections to Diddy's controversial dealings. This move, he suggests, could be strategic, potentially a way for Beyonce to safeguard her own financial interests if any legal troubles were to arise. The possibility of tension between the power couple over these rumored ties has fans questioning just how much influence Diddy's activities might have on those around him. Word to mouth, or somebody sitting you down, or you hiring a lawyer back then to teach you what you're supposed to know by representing you. So Mace has every right to be upset with Diddy because Diddy really stole his, his legacy in the music. See, what you got to understand this is that a lot of those kids learned the business after they signed their contracts. They learned the business after they was in the business for three or four years. So now, when they learned the business and they was doing, uh, sitting there right there, writing a whole record, a whole song, right? And Diddy was like, yeah, 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 yeah. Here, take this, take this, take that. Give them 10,000 for that one song that they wrote. And that song goes platinum two or three times. And he get the 25% for being the writer on that because they wrote the song and gave it to him. And he's on as the publisher, as the writer. You understand what I'm saying? He getting a percentage of the writing that was done and all he gave was 10,000. They learned and late and, and, and they learned later and later in the business that they was do that publishing. He shouldn't have got the percentage that he got on there. Cause he gave them 10,000, 5,000, 8,000 for writing. So now they learned the business late. And when they learned the business, they seen how wrong that he was doing them. Even though the music people want you to say, well, we're taking a chance. We're taking a thing. Yo, listen to me, man. You wouldn't be there. If you think that you wasn't talented and they could sell records off you and using your talents. They've seen enough people that come through. So you writing all those hits and you not getting the money from them. How many years Mace didn't get the money from Bad Boy, bad, that, that, that they used on Will Smith and them Bad Boys? I went to the premiere with Puff. Mace wasn't even there. But he wrote that. Diddy is facing more than just criminal allegations. His ex-girlfriend, Cassie, recently sued him for financial exploitation and emotional abuse, resulting in a reported settlement ranging from $1 million to $25 million. These claims raise serious concerns about Diddy's financial stability and reveal a troubling side to his personal life. The lawsuit has added another layer of controversy to his already tarnished reputation, leaving many questioning the true extent of his actions both professionally and personally. Right now. Mm. I'm not saying Diddy did it. I'm not saying Diddy didn't, uh, Diddy didn't do it. And I'm not going to say no Diddy. 
You know, that's the whole joke online right now. But when you look at it, we cannibalize our own more than they do. For sure. We will cancel us before before they do. And we will make ourselves the laughing stock, not understanding we're really li- li- doing the layup for it to happen to somebody else, right? You saw when Kanye got canceled for doing what he did, and what he did was very reckless in how he decided to articulate his thoughts. But then you saw how easy it was for people to try to go after and kill Kyrie for retweeting something that existed on Jeff Bezos' website. Right. Nobody ever mentioned Jeff Bezos. So, you know, when I look at the application to cancel culture, when I look at the storytelling, how they used to vilify Floyd. And here I am on the jet with this man, super generous, looking out for everybody, inspiring kids everywhere we go all over the world. People know him and are inspired by him. But to vilify him or make a mockery out of him or to do this and that, I'm like, yo, there has to be a platform that has a little bit more responsibility. You can still be critical, but you got to be fair and you got to be even handed in how you hand it out. Um so I, that's what I thought I wanted to do. So as a critic, um, it was Charlemagne who said, you know, cause he was somebody else I looked up to, mm-hmm. you know, and you see his evolution from when for he was sure. a Wendy to now, you know, I, I looked at him, he said, man, I, it's really hard for me to tell what you are, but if anything, you're a culture critic. So I called my attorney and I said, trademark culture critic, because that's what I am. And then now that's what I, you know, cause they would say, oh, he's a blogger. How are you going to call me a blogger and put me in about, not that there's anything with being a blogger, but that's your way of minimizing my impact. Or that's your way of minimizing my power. That's your way of minimizing my influence. And dumb people will buy into that shit. I'm way bigger than that. Cause there's people like, you know, the people that have the Wendy Williams show that told me I wasn't big enough to host her show that I went out and built a show that m- was making more numbers than, uh, with Sherry, you know, shout to Sherry. I love her show now, but you know, when she first came out the gate, I killed her in the numbers. Mm-hmm. And I didn't have the big infrastructure of a network behind me and, you know, all these advertisers. It was just me, my three people and a studio I built and we killed them, crushed them with Cardi B first episode. So I look at it like, again, you know, being a culture critic, you have a responsibility to the culture while being critic, critical to also protect it. I think, I mean, I have to ask and you being in the position that you've created for yourself, admirable, my dad, everything that's happened with Diddy right now. Yeah. Like, how does that affect you? Real relationship. These are pretty sure you've built a relationship with him respectfully over the years of knowing who he is, what he represents. Yeah. Your show was on Revolt. Yeah. I don't have a friendship with Diddy. He's not my friend. We don't hang out. We've texted a few times. I was on his network. I've been to many of his house parties. Um, and let's start with different silos of Diddy, right? Okay. On one hand. Jason Lee's encounters with Diddy have uncovered a darker side of the hip-hop mogul. He recalls a tense exchange at one of Diddy's parties, where he was warned not to cross certain lines, underscoring Diddy's notorious history of intimidation and aggression toward critics. Despite this, Jason defends Diddy's sons, Christian and Justin, stressing their innocence and distancing them from their father's alleged wrongdoings. However, Jason's bold accusations put him at significant risk. By openly criticizing Diddy and threatening to expose him, he may be walking a dangerous path, potentially facing serious repercussions. Security, almost the military, to stop people from wanting to scale the wall to get in his house because on the other side of that wall is Beyonce, Jay-Z, and every big star you want to know. T.D. Jakes was there too, but I don't know if he was busting over. I'm just saying. Because they said that too about the good bishop. This is what I hate about the internet. If you say it is true, if you think it is true, if somebody retweets it is true, everything ain't true. I don't know (laughs) what I'm just saying. The fact that they said the bishop was busting open, I honestly had to take a break that week because I said what we're not going to do is take a man who's touched the world, pause, or whatever. And in a way that all of us have felt it in our spirits when we've needed to be filled up with the word of the Lord and just castrate him that way. Yeah. But anyway, back to Diddy. We saw his kids the other day in handcuffs. Did we see Ivanka Trump and Trump Jr. in handcuffs? But they daddy got niggas thinking they Spider-Man climbing up the wall to kill the vice president and take over Congress and stop an election. But we ain't seen a mugshot or nothing because we're teaching people watching. Black and brown going to be treated one way. White going to be treated another way. Black and brown going to be cannibalized and evil and, 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 and vilified. White folks, it's a misunderstanding. We won't call a mass shooting in this country terrorism because white people killing everybody. We going to call it a debate over guns. No, it's terrorism when you go into school and kill six-year-olds. This, you know, Kamala Harris, biggest issue I have with her is that she just has not 
been able to put her feet solid on the ground with the culture and understand she said that America's not racist and now is running around to every black church that will welcome her in there because she got some white person advising her telling her that's the way to get the black vote. So I feel very passionately about these things. I think with Diddy, what we're watching is we live in an era where celebrities got to be careful and got to got to be fearful at all times because all I got to do is put everything I want to say about you in a lawsuit. Let TMZ or Hollywood unlock to anybody run the lawsuit because you can't sue a lawsuit. It's a public document. Mm -hmm. So it got out to the public. So the they did their dirty work. And then regardless if you're guilty or not, you're going to lose everything for sure. And then by the time you get to court, you lost it all. And OK, yeah, you didn't do it. It's crazy. So I'm not saying that Diddy didn't do it or he did do it. I think if he goes through his process like R. Kelly did, but we saw the R. Kelly tape. So we knew he did that. Y'all kept dancing in the name of love, asking if you could fly. You saw that did to that little kid. Yeah. But anyway, with Diddy, we didn't see all this stuff. I saw him and Cassie embracing each other, dancing and, you know, whatever. Um, and then she said what she said. We we don't know if it happened or didn't happen. We know she got a bag. We don't know how much. And then that opened the floodgates to dog pile on Diddy. And Diddy's lost it all. He's lost the school that was helping black kids. He's lost his clothing line that none of us were buying. At Sean, at Sean John over at Macy's. He lost Revolt. He he lost his Grammy nomination. He lost he lost the, the deal with Ciroc. And he was getting 50 million a year. Don't get that deal's gone. He's lost it all. And then, like, we're happy about that. I don't understand. No, it. we're not. Online, not us. Not yeah. I'm not happy or not happy. Because I'm just like wow. What you're saying is it's propaganda, right? It's it's something that's shunned or like hold on shh, 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 on one side, but on the other side, it's magnified to say these type of people are bad. When when I look at the whole situation, I'm saying to myself, I don't know what side to take, and I'm not going. It's just too much to handle. Mm -hmm. But I see what's happening and too many people are being affected. Me being a father, what does his children think? It's not fair, right? Given Diddy's history of taking strong action against his opponents, Jason Lee's safety is a serious concern. With Diddy known for his aggressive tactics and retribution against those who challenge him, Jason may need to take significant precautions to protect himself from any potential backlash. The risks involved in challenging such a powerful figure are high, and Jason's bold stance could attract dangerous attention. You're setting up the next person for it to be easier for them. And the attorney that's behind this lawsuit that just launched, I just found out it's the same guy who went after Tiffany, who went after Nicki Minaj's husband. After he had served his time and all that, came back and said, oh, wait, he went Nicki, now let's get this bag. You trying to do woo woo And then it got quiet. Same per He's an ambulance chaser that even tried to drag me into some... And I had secretly filmed him, or recorded our conversation and put it online because I'm just not that one. I, I'm not afraid and I want all the smoke. So when I look at a lot of these celebrities that have all these brand deals that are tied to millions and millions of dollars, they can't, they don't have the freedom to go and advocate for themselves. So they just sit there and watch them just get destroyed. And I feel like for me, no matter how successful I get, I'd rather lose it all by standing up for myself and what I believe in and standing on what is and, and, and against what is not than to sit by and just watch me lose everything being silent but isn't it a little contradicting that you say that on top of you said it's usually coming from in other words yeah like it's our own people that's doing it mm -hmm. so with this media trend of the bashing of diddy it's coming from hollywood a lot well we're not bashing them we're reporting what's out there, but just as I sat here and told you my opinion of who's putting it out there, we're, we just ran a story a minute ago that young Miami, we got information. She was at the Met Gala fitting in New York and not with the drug mule in, 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 uh, in Virginia Beach. You know, I'm not their publicist. And if they want to hire me as a consultant to help them through the crisis, I'll consult them. But yeah, a platform is a platform. We don't go out and create uh uh lies about these people we tell the stories that we see that we know and most of the celebrities that we have relationships with we'll figure out through them their team or whoever their perspective to make sure that there's a a fair picture painted of what's happening uh, you know the the amanda seals once said something like you're a part of the problem jason you're a part of the problem well 
Who's the problem? The people that can't digest enough of these stories, the people creating the news that we're writing about are the people making money from doing it. Everybody's a part of this ecosystem of chaos that we are experiencing right now because the world is just, it's just one click away. And every 15 minutes, there's a new chaotic moment happening, right? Um, but I will say that I'm, I'm looking at it as fair as I can uh, all the time because I'm close enough to enough people to where I can see and go, wow. I see the story that's been written about you that's not true. So let me help you learn how to tell your story better or what what happened here. And that's why I think I have so many relationships because people know I'm not just in this for the clicks. Yeah. The clicks gonna come, but I want, I want to get to the heart of what's actually- The entertainment industry is divided over Jason Lee's claims against Diddy, with some supporting his call for accountability, while others question his motives and the credibility of his statements. One thing is clear, Diddy and his alleged wrongdoings are under intense public scrutiny. These accusations come at a challenging time for Diddy, who is now on the defensive amid mounting legal troubles and concerns about his financial stability. The fallout from Cassie's lawsuit and settlement threatens to unravel his carefully crafted image as a music industry powerhouse. Although Diddy has a history of weathering scandals, his legacy is now at risk. As a resilient figure and shrewd businessman, he has navigated turbulent waters before, but the stakes have never been higher. Was you working for Diddy around the time that he was doing Making the Beer? Uh, I went there from from 99 to about 2004 to 2005, something like that. I was there when Danny D came there and some of Ness, Ness, some of the things, Ness, a couple of those guys that were still around because they was writing and doing some things. But I was there for part of it. When the camera was off, how was he treating? Like he wasn't. No, nah, he had no plans. That's all. That was all from uh, MTV show. That was all for MTV show, bro. <laughs> he had no plans for them. Not at all. He really had no plans for Danny the Game, and they sold records. And I, I, that's why I, I had said that thing about what he had said, because I think it's the parents or somebody was getting at him. They were the parents, the management or whatever, like that was getting at him hard. And that's when he made that statement that I had said. I said, he said, yo, they keep effing with me. I'm a drug all of them up and pimp them out to my neck. And I said that on your show before. So he didn't have no real plans for them. Not at all. You see what happened after the MTV shit went off. If you had plans for him, you the super producer. Somebody should have been all right. So he was just playing games with him. When he was making them go walk to get cheesecake and all that, that was all. Yeah, that was that. that's his ego. You know what I'm saying? That's his ego. Then he'll sit back in the in in, in, in his studio because he had like a like a big room. Whereas that with this giant television, we used to eat up in there, and it was it was it's like sometimes artists are going there and write. You know what I'm saying? Jennifer Lopez, they were going there with a writer and write a song or something like that. It was it was a cool room. Uh, he would go in there and just talk about, you know, all kinds of crazy shit about people or whoever it was. You know what I mean? Especially those kids. What was he saying? You know, it was just regular bullshit. You know, like who was hot, who was not. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he couldn't wait till this shit was over with. Stuff like that. As the story unfolds, the public is left grappling with a host of questions. Are Jason Lee's accusations credible? What evidence does he have to back his claims? Most importantly, what will be the repercussions for Diddy and those around him if these allegations prove true? In the age of social media and instant communication, Jason Lee finds himself at the center of a media frenzy with a spotlight firmly on him and his credibility at stake. He understands the risks of speaking out against such a powerful figure, but for Jason, the pursuit of truth outweighs the dangers. 
While rumors and information spread quickly, it remains crucial to separate fact from fiction and critically assess the situation. Time will reveal the truth, but one thing is certain. All eyes are on Diddy and Jason Lee as they navigate the murky waters of scandal and intrigue. The fallout from Jason's allegations has sent shockwaves through the entertainment industry, with far-reaching implications that will be felt for years to come. The world is watching, eager to see how this drama unfolds and what secrets will be revealed as the industry adjusts to the seismic shift in power dynamics and accountability. As the dust settles, Diddy begins to feel the full weight of Jason's charges. The once untouchable hip-hop mogul now finds himself on the defensive, scrambling to salvage his reputation under mounting scrutiny. With each passing day, more details emerge, painting a damning picture of Diddy's alleged involvement in criminal activities and attempts to evade accountability. But Diddy is not one to go down without a fight. Despite the mounting evidence against him, he remains defiant, issuing denials and attempting to discredit Jason Lee and his sources. However, his efforts to control the narrative are proving increasingly futile as public opinion begins to shift against him. Meanwhile, Jason Lee has been thrust into the spotlight like never before. His accusations against Diddy have catapulted him to fame and notoriety, earning both admirers and detractors in equal measure. Amid the chaos, Jason remains steadfast in his commitment to seeking justice and holding powerful figures accountable for their actions. I'm saying, Sean Carter, you're a piece of shit. Taking Pimp C wasn't bad enough. Real life. It ain't real life. Real life street star. Know what time it is. So why does why does Puffy why does it all come to head now? Why did why now? Why? Because he's the acceptable monster at this time. Like R. Kelly was the last time I sat on this couch. Mm. So who's next? Y'all don't see the lineup? Oh, yeah, no. yeah, we see the lineup. I'm just waiting to see who's next. Who's next? Jay-Z is setting Diddy up. Oh. Why is everyone having such a hard time? He ain't doing shit different. He lined up D Haven, stole his life and identity. He lined up Big L, stole his life and identity. He lined up Dane Dash, stole his life, identity, and took his love. Lined up R. Kelly. He wants to be the one. Yeah, shout out D Haven. He actually hit us up, wanted to tell this story. You need to talk to D Haven. Yeah, we need to talk to him. <laughs> I told you that last year you when did. I put you on the phone with him. You did. I want you to think about this. Allegedly, Sean Carter is responsible for enacting Hype Williams to put a Leo on a faulty plane to move her out the way as punishment for rejecting him and so he could level up Beyonce, who was struggling. Let's just say allegedly that happened. Now, I want you to think about 106th and Park with Mary J. Blige. Free, who is a victim of Sean Carter. Yeah. Mary J. Blige, who is a victim of Sean Combs, are sitting there talking about the death of Aaliyah amongst each other. Think about that. You got a Diddy victim, you got a Jay-Z victim, and you got a superstar gone. They know what happened. And yet, they had to sit there and have that conversation like they didn't know who did it. As the investigation into Diddy's alleged crimes progresses, more individuals, from former associates to industry insiders, are coming forward with their own accounts of abuse and exploitation at the hands of the hip-hop mogul. These testimonies have opened the floodgates, revealing a pattern of misconduct that spans decades. While the situation remains bleak, 
there are glimmers of hope that justice may be served. The growing number of voices speaking out is painting a disturbing picture of the power dynamics within Diddy's inner circle, where manipulation and mistreatment were allegedly commonplace. As more stories surface, it becomes clear that this is not just a case of isolated incidents, but part of a larger, systemic issue. The push for accountability is gaining momentum, and as the truth continues to unfold, it may signal the beginning of a reckoning for one of the most influential figures in the music industry. Howard Hemmelman. Think about Claudia Jordan right now. Claudia Jordan don't ever mention my mother name. She mentioned it yesterday. Talking about why people are afraid to come forward. You mean like you? You was Diddy girl. Corey was Jay-Z girl. Why don't you claim your friend? Claudia. So, Jack, wouldn't you say... Jay when I say Corey, I'm talking about Kathy White. Oh, yeah. That's what I was about to ask. Uh, Jay-Z's Jay pregnant Z's, mistress yeah. who died of an imaginary fucking aneurysm. Just like the woman who was best friends with Kim and Kimora, who wrote the book Bling and died as soon as it made the bestsellers list. Who the fuck was these people supposed to go to? Mm. You can't go to the boss because the boss is fucking you. And the boss is boss? Don't get no fuck. Can't go to the authorities. They're all bought and paid for. You could try to get a special prosecutor, but they'll just pay somebody to reassign him to another case. Where the fuck you go when you get fucked over by the industry? Nowhere. That's where you go nowhere, which is where people like me step in. You right, I go to Diddy parties. To walk mother f out. Because ain't nobody stopping me when I come. Mm. So let me ask you, because I look at uh, Gabriel Union. And when you mention things like Jay-Z's time is coming for him, then I look at, uh, you know, Beyonce. And I say that, you know, women do have a... That country album. And any of you that buy that, she a stupid as shit. You don't give it okay. music with God, a holster and a f hey. But she remade Jolie. Yeah, I'm going to tell you the song she should have remade. It's a hit. It would have done great for her. She should have tried it on. Tammy Wynette. Classic. Stand by your man. Don't act like you don't know that. The bravery of individuals who have exposed Diddy has sparked a wave of activism and solidarity in the entertainment industry, with calls for strict accountability and transparency echoing across social media. For many, this movement acts as a call to action, empowering survivors to speak out and seek justice in a society that often overlooks their suffering. As more people come forward with their stories, the narrative around abuse of power is shifting. The entertainment world is starting to face a reckoning where silence is no longer an option and those in positions of power must be held accountable for their actions. This newfound strength in speaking out is reshaping the industry, encouraging others who have been silenced to break their silence and demand the justice they deserve. Taking Pimp C wasn't bad enough. You just want to go down there and you want to just remove all of the balls from every real gangsta in Houston? Why the fuck did that house burn up? Who the fuck goes to their childhood house for a visit and the shit goes up in flames? That was very weird. The next day, and, and the, the week. And the, no, the next day. The next day. And, and still, no real investigation on how the house just went up in flames. <sighs> I guess they paid y'all off. Like they paid y'all off for that astral world. So, 
Let me ask you. Texas um, politics. Yeah, Texas politics, man. Yeah, this, <sighs> let's say right there. We're gonna we're gonna talk about the episode, but for right now, I just gotta get your take on when we see a killer Mike win three Grammys and get arrested immediately after because Jay Z paid somebody up just so he couldn't have a good night. You Sean. Hey man. Weirdo. I don't give a what you got in your head at Neuralink. You'll never outthink me. Ever. All I do is frustrate you in AI. Yeah. You can't quantify me. You can't even control your wife. You gonna handle a bit like me. You can't even control that goofy bitch. You should have did a better job. Maybe she wouldn't have had to lose her mind on Kathy. <laughs> Cause you ain't protecting you. You're protecting her. Wonder why. That's a good 